Do the meet and greet of all the artists, the likes of George Benson, Incognito, Shack Attack, Yuma Sakela, Jonathan Butler. I welcome them at the airport. I take them backstage, sound checks. So I'm very active in the jazz uh, international. It's the fourth biggest social event on the world international yeah. calendar, yeah. social calendar. So it's a very big uh, event. 30,000 people come from all over the world. There's five different stages happening here at the convention center five different stages and it rocks it goes on for the entire weekend so my other experience about segregation and apartheid was it picture this you are all sitting in a big hall and there's a concert taking place there's a band on the stage there's a red curtain drawn Behind the red curtain is the black keyboard player, the, ba the black uh, lead guitarist, the black vocalist. In front of the curtain is the white saxophonist. That's crazy. That's deep, man. That is deep. I mean, we could not even in the parks, we couldn't sit. There was benches in the parks, public parks, benches that said non-whites and whites only. We could not sit on the same benches. And what year was this or what decade? This was 80s? in this was in the 60s. See, in 1950, the Group Areas Act was drawn up. All of us had to move out of our houses and we were moved to the Cape Flats, the areas that I just showed you now, out of big, beautiful homes. So in 1966, the Group Areas Act of 1950 came into play and this is where people were moved out. This is how District 6 and the history of District 6 all came about. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So that's your all's history. Yeah, that's your so you're I mean, you're imagine as kids sitting in a car and crying because you can't go and put your feet in the Atlantic Ocean. So Sharon, your experience, uh, your campaign is uh, similar to what um, um, black African people went through in the civil rights movement in uh, America? Yes. The same, the same situation. Sounds like it's worse. Sounds, yeah. it sounds to me like it was worse than what it was. Yeah, man. You know, like a carrying, we didn't have to carry in passes or anything like that. In America, no. Yeah. You had to go to the back door, or you had to, you, you couldn't sit down and eat at a restaurant. You had to go around back to a window and order your food, things like that. You couldn't sit in the movie theater. We sat in the balcony, and the white folks sat in the lower level and we wanted popcorn we had to come out of the theater and go around to the side and order through a window and then go back in the theater now, we even, had to do all of that in the 60s so it's one of the same thing even for you. sorry sir even restaurants we weren't allowed to go to restaurants only in 1994 we were allowed to go to restaurants mm. so um you had to just go to kfc or you know, like get takeout or whatever. So restaurants was for white people only. I remember my personal experience in 1984. I went to see the rock group Queen in Sun City. I had a boyfriend and he bought me a ticket. It was the first time I was in a, in a plane. And off we went to the concert and he said to me, please meet me at the Wimpy. He was a boilermaker and he worked uh, about an hour out of Sun City where the concert took place. And he said to me, meet me at the, the, at the restaurant. Uh, called the Wimpy. So off I go and I sit down, I get there before him and I order breakfast. And halfway through the breakfast he arrives and the manager comes over. As he sits down, the manager comes over and the manager says, excuse me, you are not allowed in here. Can you just get out of my restaurant, please? And I go, but why? And he says, because he's black. So I said, so am I. So he said, you can stay, but he must go. So I got up, I took my hang handbag, I took the corner of the tablecloth and I left. <laughs> so we have had many, many sad, a lot of sad moments um, of people. Even sometimes you'd go, to, you'd go down, um, say now if a, if a dark skinned colored person, which is a lot of, would uh, say so you're sitting at just at the beach now I'm sitting with him he's my boyfriend he's darker skinned than me we both colored the police comes along 
and they just take him and they go and lock him up because he's with a white girl but you just said you were colored but they, yeah, they, she's saying that's what they call the him. So we, when they did, so when they, when they, um, they, they did tests on people, right? When, when segregation all started in the early 60s, they let all the people line up and they would do tests. The first test would be the pencil test. They would put the pencil in the hair and if the pencil didn't fall out of the hair, it meant that you do not have straight hair and you cannot be white. So go and stand under the black umbrella. If you had a flat nose, you go and stand under the black umbrella. If your eyes, Asian people, um, if your eyes were more slightly slanted, go and stand under the black umbrella. If your gums weren't a certain color pink, go and stand under the black umbrella. So that is all the things that took place um this is the cape town international convention center where all our big events take place like the cape town international jazz festival the house festivals those are like sort of um more at the clubs they have the house music and long street is our party street in cape town so Friday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday nights are the party nights. So you may just go in a group, take a cab there. There's a place called the Dubliner. It's an Irish pub and they have like a two-man band and music and dancing. All Upstairs they have house music, downstairs they have like different music in the different sections. But jazz is, uh, is big. Got a quick question for you right here. Why did Asian, Asian people go under the um, black umbrella? They were also declared um, as non-whites because of the shape of their eyes. Oh. So they were also um, under the black umbrella as in classified as black and a different identification number. Like my family, I have a lot of cousins that are fair. I have um, my late sister is dark, looks like my Indian grandmother, so it's uh, like we call the Rainbow Nation because we are, have so many different cultures and colors of people um, living here. Any more questions? We really appreciate you just breaking that down and just being honest and sharing, us, sharing with us your experience. And we're doing it for Africa, for the Africans. <laughs> Thank you very much for Absolutely. coming to the Mother City in Town, South Africa. I appreciate you. Absolutely. Yeah, that, that was... Yeah. Do you do uh, 